Hello and greetings to everyone. Welcome to Behind the, Ve Behind the Veil. I am Stephen Williams. They call me the good bishop, but ain't nobody really good but God. And so we thank God for all that. Thank you. God bless you and all that good stuff. But y'all, welcome to Behind the Veil. Oh, we have a wonderful, we're going to have a great time tonight. Uh, we're going to do that. We're going to actually have a ball with my guests. Uh, we're talking about what's going on, what you're going to be able to buy, and what, you, what you're what not going to be able to buy. Lord, your goods and stuff is sitting out on the water, is on the ships. And uh, we're going to talk about that. I have a great guest tonight. Uh, and uh, it's going to be so much fun. Listen, tell your friend, tell your neighbor, all that good stuff. I got a few things housekeeping to do right now. First thing I want to do is tell you, please, for Behind the Veil, we're putting up our cash app here. If you would like to uh, sow into uh, the Behind the Veil thing, there it is right there. Cash app me at SLW, the number four, the word real. I'm taking $10 up to 10000 Just go on and throw it on in there. <laughs> we got stuff to do. We have artists to reach. <laughs> and so cash up a brother uh, right here on, the, on Behind the Veil. On Behind the Veil. It is a great platform. Y'all know we have some of the best information uh, coming from this platform. We have some of the best stuff. And so please, ma'am, please, sir, do that if you don't mind. Go ahead and cash up a brother. I'll put it back up when it's over. And so we can have fun doing that. And then what I need you to do is go to SLW Behind the Veil on the YouTube channel. And I'm going to need you to subscribe. I want you to subscribe because we don't know what's getting ready to happen uh, with the Facebook. I just so, saw something today that they were taking down the um, they were taking down the uh, facial recognition. I didn't know Facebook had a facial recognition, but here comes some stuff. My sister is in here. And so I'm asking anybody, y'all come on in, join the group. My brother McRaven is in here. James McRaven, I'm so grateful for you all joining me behind the veil. I'm sitting up here now and, uh, you know, I, I got music. Y'all know how we do. We're going to play some music uh, tonight. We're going to play some music and uh, we're going we're gonna to do some stuff. Dr. Jerry. Thank you for joining me. Man, this is getting ready to be good. Get y'all questions ready uh, and write down some stuff because I just got some news about eight pound turkeys. We're going to talk about them. Thanksgiving is coming up and I just want you to know there's some stuff going on out here in this atmosphere uh, and I need you all to understand. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Behind the Veil. I'm Stephen Williams. They called me the good bishop. And again, ain't no body good but god listen i think i'm gonna do tonight i got new music coming out i got new music everywhere i ain't gonna play nothing slow tonight i'm going back old school a little bit this is one of them old ones that i that i like back in uh back back and i'm gonna pull this one up i want to hear this one uh all day today anyway and i think i'm gonna try to pull this one up It ain't no no CD yet, but it's coming out. I love it. It's coming out on the next project. My friend Beverly, thank you. Come on in. Come on with it. I got Mona moving. Come on, put your hands together. This ain't your mama's gospel. <laughs> 
Yes, sir. I'm moving too, Cynthia. <laughs> Dr. Rudy Hill. He's my everything to praise him. lost it that's it that's the end of my mighty mighty god mighty mighty god we serve i hope y'all still along here oh lord it just stopped in the middle of it it was good too it was getting good to me hallelujah it was getting good to me but that's my mighty 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 god song and i'm telling you it's just a wonderful time it's just a wonderful thing uh that that is happening and i appreciate the opportunity for you to join me tonight for behind the Bail. This is going to be a good night. Uh, I, I have a very good friend tonight. Uh, well, you know, we we go way back. Uh, and let me just get some of this, these uh, these credentials. Uh, let me get my credentials uh, in order so I can introduce to you uh, uh, this uh, one, this wonderful lady. Uh, my, my guest tonight, as you know, is Javon McCray. Uh, she is an entrepreneurial executive with strength in marketing and operations and business development. Uh, her mission and her passion are to provide quality educational resources focused on diversity and inclusion for early learners. Uh, uh, the need for the material, this material became evident years ago. And so she started working uh, when she worked for an early learning operation. So she was inspired by the lack of availability of diversity uh, based resources. Uh, so she joined forces with a partner and together they conceptualized and created and promoted a catalog filled with the much needed curriculum and programs. And so once, once she got into that, she started moving forward and doing better and better. And so she went on to do multiple roles. And now she provides executive, letter leader, executive level leadership over business development and marketing operations. She has founded two profitable companies uh, and uh, led uh, effective sales and marketing programs, managed technical pro projects, hired and trained amazing teams, and she has managed a $1.2 million budget. Would y'all show some love for Miss Javon? Is that the way we're going to say Miss Javon McCray. Let me bring her in. <sighs> hey, <Mom>. oh my <laughs> <God>. <laughs> hello, 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 Williams. How are you? I am good. That's that's about that was good though, wasn't it? I, it was. I was listening to you read all of that, and I was like, "That is the ultimate hype, man!" And did I really do all of those things? Like you did, you did and been doing it for a long time. I'm so can, I, can I take you around with me to be my cheerleader? I need that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, <laughs> wait a minute. Am I the new? Uh, what's what was? What, uh, am I the new flavor flavor? <laughs> you look better though. You look better. <laughs> I'm going to give me a big clock. <laughs> Listen, this is going to be a fun night. Uh, we have so much great conversation when we talk and uh, we can go any subject matter, any kind of way we want to. Uh, but tonight we have chosen to talk about, um, we have chosen to really talk about 
this port system, this this thing that that has all the goods and the services. And one of the reasons why I chosen to have uh, Javon do this with me is uh, because I knew she had a business and I knew she had books and things that she would get done uh, overseas and projects, products that was done overseas and then shipped over here. And I wanted to know how that was affecting her business. And she's been doing this. Oh, my God. I think I've been knowing her, what, maybe 10, 15 years now. Yeah. And so um, and so she's been doing that back and forth. And I thought, nah, this has got to affect her in some way, shape or form. And so that's why she's here tonight. Uh, not only is she successful, uh, African-American female, she's been doing her thing for a long time. Uh, but I know she has figured out a way around this because she's a sister. So she's already figured out what she needs to do <laughs> and how to make this better. Mona, tell me what in the world. Why are these ships? Oh, my God. I think it's a, a multi-layered um, problem. But you are absolutely correct. Um, I am having to make choices as far as what products we bring in and what products we say, hey, let's put a hold on it for um, 2021 and start shipping those again in 2022, which at wow. the end, of, yeah, which at the end of the day affects my bottom line, you know, or the bottom line of the company. Um, you're right. I have been doing this for I think um, since Creative Diversity went. To, you know, then Mojo was we sold Creative Diversity, so um, it's been about 15 years. Um, and I've never seen it like this. I, I, I have not seen it like this. Um, my hope and my prayer is that it gets better. Um, we're coming off the heels of signing a um, multi-year contract, six-figure contract with one of the largest early childhood companies in the U.S. And right now I can't like get their supply in which wow yeah um and these are all of course products that we design in-house but um you know within business you learn to just grin and bear it um th these things that don't kill you make you stronger um you learn how to think a little bit smarter um i've started using some freight services as far as air freight, which, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to raise the bottom line for the end user or, my, or the consumers. Um, what's going on in the ports is yeah. just... So why are they stuck? Is, is it because of the, is it because of the containers or is it, because I was told it was three part, mm -hmm. trucker, container, lack of people in the containers to get the goods and services off but then the ships have been sitting in the water for like days and can't get the products to okay. the containers okay so let's think about it like this at the the start of COVID, right um china shut down right so when china shut down we were getting we we were getting product that left china came to the u.s right right um, and then once it got to the U.S., the ships that would normally return back to China with the empty containers okay. were not going back to China. So those empty containers were sitting here in U.S. ports. Got you. Which mean, meant that there was a shortage of containers. Wow. Okay. Right. Now you got to think about what our containers, right? They all come, 80% of our containers come from China anyway. There are like three major um, manufacturers of containers in China. So China is shut down. These containers are sitting at the ports in the US. So we can't, we can't even export goods back to China because they're sitting in the, the ports. Ships were like, oh, we're losing money. So we're going to take our ships and go back and try to pick up more stuff to a closed down country and not take these containers back. So then there's an even longer wait of waiting for new containers to be made or old containers to get back. Then on top of that, when you think about China being shut down, we're all sitting at home, right? Right. When you're sitting at home, you have nothing to do. We're going to eat and spend money. <laughs> Amazon. Yes. Amazon comes to my door still almost every single day. So I, mine too. I have somebody who brings Amazon here every day. 
it's, it, it, it's addicting. It, it really is addicting. So now you're sitting home, you're spending money that we don't need to be spending because I'm I'm one of the ones. Um, so we're spending money um, on like consumer goods, like tablets, electronics. Yeah. So now when China opens back up, there is a backlog of orders for these things. Wow. Makes sense. Yes. So now I say it's not, we say it's a supply problem. I say it's a not having enough people problem because right. you think about the supply. You have people that are running sewing machines. Um, you have people that are stocking. You have people that are pulling orders. So it's a multi-layer thing going on right now in the industry. Couple that with, uh, I just found out we're running out of cardboard for boxes. Cardboard. Listen, I already told. Look, we don't have chips for new cars. Let's not there talk was, about chips. There was something about the white paint, or something about paint that people mm -hmm. get something in the paint. Mm -hmm. And now you're telling me I I can't get no cardboard. There, listen, Amazon gonna have to bring you. <laughs> Amazon gonna have to bring your stuff in plastic bags, honey. But then there's a problem with plastic because there's like a fuel problem in overseas too because I import in plastic um, toys. Fuel goes up overseas, price of my toys goes up overseas, or if there's a shortage. Um, so then let's let's talk about this. And I, I know we're gonna you and I can talk forever, and we go on and on because we bounce off each other. China also has a energy problem. Yes, you were telling me about that. Oh, yes. they're rolling blackouts. So if it would normally take you a month, 45 days for production, it may be two, three months now because the government is saying, hey, we're having an energy problem. We're going to shut you down right now and let somebody else run their factory. Wow. I mean, so has, has this is this is bigger than us. Right? This is bigger than but us. Do, but do you think the U.S., has figured out they really have jacked up because so much we were so dependent upon China and Indonesia and Vietnam for all the stuff that we get. Uh, like those, I, I didn't realize um, like the tennis shoes and stuff, right. that stuff is being made in Vietnam and Indonesia for a small right. place. And y'all paying like $500 for these shoes that probably cost about $20 over there or, or you know, whatever that is, whatever. The, the markup is mm -hmm. ridiculous. And now we can't get any of that stuff, which means prices are going to be higher. Absolutely. I knew, uh, Williams, that we were in trouble. Um, and, you know, I try. I, I think for the most part, I'm pretty positive. I knew we were in trouble as a country when I went to India. Okay. Tell me about India. I ain't been. So when I went to India, I think this was in 2009, 2010, and I saw American Express. I saw um, Dell. I saw. Uh, I went to actually the factories where they were making blue jeans. Oh wow! And when I realized that we are having so many of our resources and products outsourced yeah. um, as a country, like, and there's nothing new. But when I saw in India for myself and saw everything in action, I was like, the U.S going to have some problems really yeah. soon, really yeah. soon um because we you know we were outsourcing we, and we still do it today customer service yes 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 customer service is outsourced i always get uh people from bangladesh or whatever it is when i call <laughs> yeah so i and when i read the the book um the world is flat I, I said, yeah, this is India up and down. Um, we have a, a, a problem. Houston, we definitely have a problem. We need to start bringing things back to America as much as we can. But the problem is it, in bringing things back to America, you know, is our cost of labor is higher. Yes. Which would make our goods higher. Yes. Which would mean we probably won't be purchasing those. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But what so how is it going to affect now? Because if you've had problems getting product back here, uh, won't you in, in order for you to survive, will you not have to raise your prices? Um, so, yes, I have made the decision to raise prices on certain goods, um, but I also am one of these people with a soft heart. And I'm like, at the end of the day, you know, 
um, we're working in education and there's only but a certain threshold that we can go. Um, so you have to also be wise about that as well. But on certain products, I had had to make the have made this decision to increase prices and which is hard for us because we haven't increased prices in three years. Wow. So but, let's, let's put this plug in. Tell us about your oh my god what you, what you bring because you, you do a lot with diversity, uh, uh, children's books, uh, toys. Mm -hmm. uh, what, tell us about tell us about that. Tell the people about that. And maybe how can they get some of your? <laughs> so um, we are Mojo Education, and the the sole purpose. Um, behind Mojo Education is to bring products into early childhood classrooms, whether that's pre-K, first grade, second grade, that focus on diversity and inclusion. So um, we design products where you can actually see people of color being things um, that you don't normally see every day. So you can see like a person of color on a puzzle that may be a judge, um, trying to get kids to, you know, see the world a little bit differently. We also teach about other cultures. Uh, we bring in things from India. We bring in things from um, Russia. We bring in things to represent culture so we can have more of an all-inclusive acceptance of each other. Um, we have about 75, 76 products. Um, Currently, you can find us at MojoEducation.com, but our largest reseller right now is Kaplan Early School Supply. So I always send people to Kaplan. Um, shout out to Kaplan. Thank you for support. Kaplan, <laughs> thank you for the support. Yeah, um, we've been doing this now for over um, since 2006. Um, prior to that, we had a company called Created Diversity. Um, which we would source um, things from other companies in the U.S., but we realized quickly that that wasn't the answer. We need to get more so in the manufacturing and design. So um, sitting at home one night, having my prayer time, um, the Holy Spirit said it's time to sell Create Diversity. So we sold it, and then once we sold it, we actually became one of their um, vendors, uh, and then we started selling to them and to their competition. Yeah, y'all, she's smart. She figured out a way how to make money, help the people buy them. And then they had to hire her to be something great in the company and, and then partnership. So she got paid twice, y'all. She's a smart sister. All right. <laughs> all right. Now, that was good. MojoEducation.com or go to Kaplan so you can get some of these diverse products. Tell us. Because we, we y'all, this is going to be a great one, but it's going to be a short one. Uh, 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 Javon is very busy. And so we're going to get her out of here around about around about eight o'clock. She has some other pressing in another pressing engagement. Y'all so do it. <laughs> Don't even do it. So she slipped the slip in on behind the veil with me. So so what's out there on that water? Thanksgiving is coming up. What's stuck on the water? What is it that we can't get? And what have you heard about prices and things? Because y'all, we got to talk about the turkey. I can't wait to tell y'all. So uh, by far, I'm not the expert in this, but because I am shipping back and forth, I hear um, from my um, freight forwarders what's going on. Uh, one of the things that we should look forward to is everything, of course, increasing in price. And um, before you can ship a container from China for about three, $4,000. That has now tripled. Wow. Right. <laughs> that has tripled. So, you know, we're going to have to pay for it at the end. Um, also, the thing is, if you're going to be wanting certain toys, you, you already know we, whenever PS2s or anything, any kind of PS player come out, there's a shortage. So right. if you want that this year for Christmas and you haven't already gotten it, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, she's coming up sorry. I'm sorry. Any kind of specialty toy that you want, you know, go ahead. Do Christmas now. Shop for Christmas now. If you wait, like I usually do, to two weeks or a week before Christmas, you will be short. You're so be shop, short. shop for Christmas now. Then let me tell you the most interesting thing that I heard today, actually, because you and I were talking about turkeys last week. Right. Uh, so... Um, my, um, one of my suppliers was talking about turkey to me, turkeys to me. And he said, you know, it's going to be a problem for turkeys this year. And I was like, 
turkeys? And he was like, yeah. He was like, you know, most people are trying to do smaller gatherings for COVID. Right. Uh, and we normally we would go to grandma's house and have like a 15, 20 pound turkey. So most people are going to be looking for like the smaller turkeys. He was like, if you find one, you'll be doing great things. He said, go and get that 20 pound turkey because you're not going to find an eight or 10 pound turkey right now. Wow. And I thought that was interesting. Wow, that's very interesting. I wonder why why the smaller one is because everybody is going to um, try to do a smaller thing so that right, because of COVID. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Because I'll get the twenty pounder because the eight pounders ain't gonna be there. Grandma, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Grandma, we ain't coming this year to your house. We gonna have to. We gotta do something else. We gotta do something else. Oh. And I say to stock up on canned goods because um, um, <laughs> I'm bringing my grandchildren. <laughs> I'm like that. That's probably the best thing to do, Jim. That sugar say he is going to carve them some wooden toys. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but I say still stock up on canned goods because there's an aluminum shortage as well. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm just like the things what that I, what's wrong with the aluminum? I have no clue what's wrong with the aluminum. I just know that my supplier was like, listen, get you some canned goods and keep, keep them in your house, baby. I said, okay. Aluminum? Aluminum shortage. Oh God. So we got a cardboard sh shortage. We got aluminum shortage. Uh, we can't get your toys. I did see this bike shop that was on CNN. Mm -hmm. the, man, the man said people have ordered bikes and they had ordered bikes. And maybe it was custom bikes. Maybe in like Boston is somewhere like that. Mm -hmm. And he said they were six months behind on getting these people their bikes. And he was like, they won't get here for Christmas. Uh -uh. Have you ordered a car lately or furniture? No, no. Okay, so I gave all my furniture away. Um, Look at Miss you. <laughs> Rent. <laughs> I thought that's right. Is it is is a Christmas gift this year? Won't he do it? Yes, he will. <laughs> my box with lights been on the inside. You got power, baby. You got power. Um, but if you haven't ordered furniture lately, uh, I gave away my furniture. I think it was in February, March. I am literally still sleeping on my mattress and box spring. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I don't sorry. even have a dining room table. <laughs> well, and you know what they said? It will probably be February. Wow. Well, Turkey Day ain't going to be at your place. You ain't <laughs> no. Got no you ain't got no more no. for us to sit no. down. <laughs> no, it will not be at my place. And the, the fact, I think it's humorous that, um, um, I am actually sleeping on a mattress in a box spring at this stage in my life. <laughs> yeah, all that, all that. Yes, Jim just heard that rent was going to triple this year. Yes, because of the moratorium yes. lift and and the government. So those companies now are trying to uh, make up for those loss. And and Goldsmith and I talked about this because they are raising rent now five and six hundred dollars. Uh, seven hundred, eight hundred dollars. Yes. And so, so now you, 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 you got to get back to work. Dan, now you're telling me you don't, you got to spend more money for your rent, and you ain't got no aluminum and, and no car, but you can't even sleep on the car, but ain't no, car, <laughs> no. And 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 the thing I don't think people realize is the more we have these shortages, like let's talk about the car shortage. Uh, I just heard today from a friend of mine that. Toyota just laid off like 400 people because we're having the shortage of the, the chips. You understand yes. that, right? So right. what happened was when COVID first hit, people were like, the car dealers were like, oh, well, people aren't going to be buying cars. So we need to start canceling some orders because we this is going to last us for a while. Oh, okay. So, Yes. So they started canceling the orders, which means the chips that go in the cars, they didn't need those. They started canceling those. And then most places that were making these chips started retooling their um, machinery to make chips to go on your tablets so they can keep, 
you know, keep keep, keep money going. So so now, you know, with the car shortage, because we don't have these chips, what does that mean? Like, if you can't sell cars or get parts for cars, then then people not working. You are, I don't know if anybody tried to buy a used car right now. Used cars are like having gold. Yeah, I heard it's bananas. Yes. I heard it's bananas uh, that they use car and they're asking uh, uh, the, the big companies are asking you to bring in cars if you have right. Jeeps, you know. <laughs> right. So I I bought a Jeep, a Jeep for um, my godmother for um, birthday. Um, and since she was gone for a few months um, out, of, out, of, out of state, the Jeep was just sitting here. I was actually asked by one of the top manufacturers of cars can you bring your jeep in since you're not driving it and we'll give you a great price for it and i was like are you freaking kidding me this is just, hey, horses and buggies are coming back look the mopeds that used to be back in the day <laughs> and with with fuel prices sounds really good right about now listen because fuel people hadn't said anything about this but gas is like Three fifty for the mid grade, uh, y'all. Gas is high, and we haven't even gotten to uh, real November decent traveling months where right. they, they usually take it up even higher. Right, so, Lord Jesus. Right. So you know the car shortages um, has caused problems even with rental cars. So if you have, if you do have problems with your cars, wow. which people do. Uh, I mean, if you normally get a loaner from the dealership, well, they didn't sell the loaners. So now you got to go to, they send you to the rental car and they'll pay for it for a couple of days. But that's even a problem right now. I mean, we're in a world of mess. But there is hope. I, I okay. do I do feel hopeful a little bit. A little, um, bit. A little bit. I do feel hopeful. I think um, by the end of 2022, we should be back on track. By the end of 2022? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I think we did not understand the impact COVID was going to have. And I don't think we understood the impact China was going to have um and and like ships like the the people sitting out in the ports i mean somebody i I was on they were talking about they've been sitting out there for days with with stuff and can't get it to i'm glad you explained that about the containers though can't take the containers back so i i mean this saints saints are the most high it's praying time chilling now are we back to uh because I, I think I made a note that uh, we're back to they're rationing out the paper towels and the they are at, you know my favorite place that I'm not gonna say because they don't pay me. Um <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna stop mentioning places that don't pay us, okay? <laughs> but they are and not only that, they're rationing out water, bottled water. So oh, we're back to we're back to the bottle, we're back because of the plastic. Yes. Wow. Mm-hmm. So now is China not opening back up or is it so far behind now that it's just going to take a, a long time for us to recycle? Because I thought they were back open. China is opening back up, but, you know, they are a little bit more cautious than we are. If there right. is somebody at their um, um, factory that has COVID, they will shut down. Um, we probably we we're like, okay, well, you take seven days and come back. We don't even know if the person is still positive or not. We take seven days and come back. But China does not play that. They will shut down. They're yeah. doing like really aggressive testing and everything. But also, um, I just think too, when it comes to China and the manufacturing, like I, I, I honestly don't want to say this, but I'm gonna say it. What is a way to cripple a uh, uh, economy, another yes. country, but to slow down everything? But so you, down. you have to wonder if there is something more sinister playing in the background of all of this. Right. So yes, they are back. Um, they are, like I said, having these rolling blackouts because they're having energy problems. So it's just a plethora of things that kind of like pull together to make just a big pot of mess. Listen to this. Cynthia says beauty supplies are going up because of shipment. Yes. So that means now 
that uh, to get your wig did. <laughs> Cynthia, has weave gone up too? <laughs> Call us, call us. Look, it's already expensive trying to be a woman and be cute in this world. Now they, they got to, just got to stop. It's too much. <laughs> well, Jim said it best. He said we're gonna have to learn how to do more with less. Oh, she said yes. Oh my gosh, weave is going up. So, so here is this. Here's this ricochet effect, Saints, that we're talking about. That b- because of shipment now. Hair will go up, you know, to get your hair done. Gas is going up. Uh, you know, there's a shortage on the toys. There's a, and, and you like me. I, I mean, I'm not going to, wait a minute. I ain't going to the mall to right. December. Just ignorant. Just, just plumb ignorant. I ain't even going out, but I'm going out to the mall in December just so I can see the people and then pick up the stuff. So that last minute stuff, that's over. We won't be able to do that. Now you're talking about supplies are going up. Rent is going up, y'all. So we're in a kind of a place um, and they still making money and the budget has not passed. That 1.2 trillion, they have not passed that budget yet. So uh, Lord Joe, uh, President Joe, I'm... I'm Somebody help Joe out. Ooh, somebody help him. I'll put Joe on a prayer list Sunday. Please put Joe... President Joe, President Biden, I ain't even gonna disrespect you, President Biden, but you 78 and you got these kind of issues with America. And it seems like it is just a ricochet effect. Yeah. So your is. thing is we're talking about, we're talking about um Jim says sli- uh, supply and demand should be considered. It's a setup. There, there, be, I feel there that may way. be something to that now, yeah. because uh, because 45 really ticked some people off. And then COVID, you know, then we had the COVID. Fit. I would slow down too, because I would be like, wait a minute, you all try to tell us what to do. You blame COVID on us. I would be like, slow down for America. Just slow down, slow down, make them, make them do something. So uh, we're going to have an interesting time during this, um, during this, this time. So you think, End of 22. Uh-huh. Wow. What do you think, though? I mean, like... I don't know. I, 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 I'm, I'm thinking we're going to... We're going to... I'm thinking 22 is... You're probably right. I was thinking more aligned the front of 23. Uh-huh. I was giving us another year. I thought we would have COVID under wraps by now, but uh, I just read this morning that there is a second... That there is a... Um, more aggressive variant of Delta that's even in North Carolina. It's not causing a lot of problems. You know, it's not sending you to the hospital, but it is more effective. I mean, it's more contagious. And so we don't have that yet. This is November. We still going to have this shortage in from in December. Uh, it's going to take us a minute as Americans to kind of bounce Right back, so I was thinking we're gonna struggle 22. Mm-hmm. We won't get back to normal outside, maybe without masks. May, April, May, maybe, 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 maybe. right? Maybe, um, maybe, but it is harming every area of the goods and services, and I knew. Uh, I knew Javon would, would be able to give us some insight. I, I didn't know about the cardboard, the aluminum. You've educated me today. Uh, you talking about the turkeys. Um, the turkeys uh, are funny to me. <laughs> and now you're talking about plastic. I hadn't really thought about that. Mm-hmm. I, I was thinking more of a water shortage more than I was a bottling shortage. Right. Yeah, I, I was thinking more of a... You know, but wow. So and if you think about like even the aluminum, like our sodas, um, or some yes. of pop. Um, so if you can't get the aluminum to put they the pop or soda in, like they call that pop down there where you from. They don't call that no pop no more. It's, it's sodas. Give me some drink, as they say. They call it. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> 
second night. <laughs> <laughs> you will be you wherever you go. <laughs> Listen, on whatever platform, I'm going to be me wherever I go. Y'all already know that. Y'all behind the veil. It's right. Wheels and ain't nobody but, good. But even but, deeper, um, Williams, when you think about all the shortages that we are. Um, yes, I said pop. Yes, I said pop, Cynthia. Uh, <laughs> when we think about the shortages um, that we are experiencing right now, like what does that mean to um, everyday people? Yeah, like yeah. what does that mean to your parishioners? Um, yeah. And that's why we want to talk about that. Right. So so I know we don't walk in the spirit of fear, but no. at the end of the day, like, does that mean we're going to have some more layoffs, even though they're saying they can't find people to work, which I think is something different yeah. behind that, too. That's but I'm not going to add, too. Yeah, I'm not even going to add my commentary on that. OK, right. But like if we can't find like if we can't, there's no aluminum, there's a shortage of aluminum right. and they can't put sodas in the can like they used to put sodas in the can pop. Uh, what does that mean? Like, are they going to start laying people off um, right. again? Like with the whole car shortage of the chip um, can't get parts. So are people like mechanics and stuff going to be laid off? I mean, what does that all mean? We have to think out at, at, as a bigger picture of all of this. Yes. Because, you know, I, I always say if you got to get ready, you, you are already behind. You already um, yeah. So um, I, I have been like, I, I wanted to redo the cabinets in my house and I really felt like, okay, I'm going to do that. Then there was a price increase. I think it was like 30% in a period yes. of a month and a half for mm -hmm. lumber. Like, what? Yep. Yep. let me go cut down a tree or something. This yep. is too much. But then I also felt like in my spirit, I need to hold what I got for a minute. I need yeah. to hold tight for a minute, not spend money. And I know sometimes it's hard because we're sitting at home. There's nothing for us to do. You know, we're looking at the stuff on the walls that we've been looking at for years. But before we were going to an office, so it didn't really matter. Uh, we're looking at the old sofa and the old couches and stuff. But I think right now it is imperative that we um, look at, you know, not spending as much. As yes. a whole. And if we are going to spend, I think we should be smart about our spending. Like you just talk about talked about, you know, the whole housing moratorium um, and rent going up. So if you're going to spend money, like let's use our dollars to invest. So we'll be we'll be sitting together and a better future going forward. So, yeah. our, you know, we all been sitting at home for COVID for seven years of plenty and seven years of life. Oh my God, we yep. that's the whole conversation right there. Um, Jim, Jim, stop sending all these good nuggets, and we only have a little bit of time left. Now, we even know I have another engagement, Jim. Jim, we bring Jim back on here hey, and Jim let's have a whole picture. conversation with Jim. Because <laughs> Jim gives us all these good nuggets. But I think I think what he's talking about is true. You know, I think what and, and what you are saying is so crucial. Uh, we, we talked about this to the, about the church, which is one of the reasons why I want to have it in this platform, because the church is the place that's going to be affected. You, you know, the a, a large part in large part, we're going to be in fact uh, affected by it. And um, there is this thing where, first of all, I want you all to know this is not God's first famine. So don't be tripping. Right. God, God's been through plenty of famines. And so have a lot of other black people before us, African-Americans. They've been they've been through this before. So we will get through it if we fall, fall, you know, follow suit. But I think what you're saying is crucial. Sit tight. Love your family. This is not the year for you to do a lot of excess. I'm with you. I'm with you, Jim. Get off credit cards. Try to do the best you can to uh, get debt free because you don't want anybody taking anything from you. You don't want to have to try to lose. I mean, because what you, when you said that about the car dealership, I'm going to tell you what I thought about. The car salesman. Right. See, that's the person. Now, the mechanic may still be around because we still have old cars that need some level of fixing. Uh -huh. But what are you going to do with the salesperson? Right. See, because not they to, have nothing to sell. Right. Because not to cut you off, but I had a girlfriend who placed an order um, for a new Telluride. And she placed an order 
Telluride's by Kia. It's one of their upper lines, you know. Yeah, um, but anyway. Um, order stuff. <laughs> she plays Her friends order. We <laughs> She placed an order for a new Telluride. <laughs> Do you know she had to wait a few months to see if Kia actually accepted the order? Wow. Wow. Have you ever heard of such? I have never. And have, have you driven by a car lot? Yeah, it's empty. And I've yeah. never seen a car lot empty. Do right. You, it's empty. Chilling is empty. It's empty. So you're right. My my heart does go out to the salespeople. Like, what how, how are you making it? Yeah. Um yeah, you got y'all, let's just save some money. Yeah. I mean, because this is not the season to be frivolous. And I agree. Well, it's hard. My brother works in construction and he said, Oh God, I'm glad uh, I don't know. He said he was dealing with this pastor and they wanted a deck. And the pastor waited, the pastor waited for a little while. And my, my brother went back uh to, to put the deck on. And he said, Well, that deck now was it went from four thousand to like eighty five hundred because he's he told me. Tell me the best. The pastor went to cussing, trying to cuss. What the pastor? <laughs> <laughs> and notice I said when you said cursing, not the pastor. <laughs> and that joke is talking about well, you ought to have the faith. And my brother ain't nowhere near nobody's church. He talking about well, you ought to have the faith. And then he said, Well, you ain't got no faith because you was up here cussing about somebody. <laughs> but that's how quickly it went up 50. It went up 55%, 30 to right. 55% because of the lumber situation. Right. So we need to make sure we're saving. We need to make sure our spending, y'all. Look, do Christmas this year. Love your family. How right. about that? Right. Because the reality is we've got enough. We have but enough already. What? Now, are we getting ready to have a shortage with clothes and jeans? Since oh, my gosh, yes. We are having a shortage because of some things going on in, like, Vietnam, um, Vietnam, um, Malaysia. Yeah, we're we going to have a shortage. Uh, I was reading something about Steve Madden couldn't get some of his shoes in. And, yeah, we're going to have a shortage. You know, Gucci even having when Gucci start having a problem, you got a problem. Gucci got a problem. Gucci got a problem. <laughs> Oh God, we yeah. Yeah. Listen, we're just in trouble with things. With things, and you know what? I think this is this is a good problem. So this to speak. is a great problem because we have been in love so much with things. I include it. I include it. Now you know how I like to roll. Things. So, um, I we have been in love so much with things. I think it's making us look at things, um, look at the world a little bit differently. Yes. Look at what's really important. Um, concentrate on family, friends, good health, you know, and our relationship with yes. other people. I mean, things come and go. They come and go. And really, do you really need another pair of pants right now? Uh, Jim is, Jim is, he is on fire. Community. Oh yard yeah. Sales. How about let's take those things that we sell at the community um, yard sales gym and buy some stock? <laughs> yes. Wait a minute, but what we gonna buy stock is? No, we not gonna talk about that. <laughs> but listen, I hope somebody bought some stock pre-pandemic. Did you buy some of that AMC and Macy's pre-pandemic? No, but I should have. You I should have called me. I know it. I should have that AMC. I saw it. I was watching this. I was in into investments and I was like, oh, it was cheap. And I should have yeah. bought it then. And then that it just skyrocketed. Yes. Yeah, and then you uh, still get out. Yeah. And then you then you get on out. Yeah. Soon we, you make, as soon as you make a little bit of money, get see, on out of there. Some people try to be too greedy because Macy's at uh, the uh, start of the pandemic was like five, six dollars. Yeah. Um, then Macy's went up, I think last week it was like 45 bucks. Yeah. Listen, but you sell and get out. Listen, I was in it heavy and uh, with, with a good friend of mine, uh, 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 Sam Juan Timmons, he was helping me with uh, with stocks. And when I tell you, we were watching the stock market. I was doing my thing. We was doing our trading in and out. And we, he was helping me navigate. And some days he would buy and he would keep it. And then some days I would buy and then I'd get out when I made a little bit. And it's a shame. One time we saw a stock. I kid you not. This stock was like it had dropped down to like seven dollars. Mm -hmm. 
we looked up and the stock had gone up to $70. (gasps) And we both were like, we got out at the wrong time. Oh my God, looked like it was going down. And it went up to, I mean, we could have, we could have racked up. We could have retired. Could have retired. Could have retired. Uh, so yes, so Saints, we, we've got to do something. I brought her on, and I've got to get her off. She's got uh, an appointment, and um, uh, I'm just honored that you would have the opportunity to just kind of tell us a few things that's going on in your world. Um, so aluminum is a problem. Uh, plastic is a problem. Now she's telling us cardboards may be a little problem. Uh, you know, uh, uh, jeans and shoes, those things, the prices are going to go up if you can get it. Uh, the PS5, PS2, 3, 4, 5, whatever. Know, right? She's like, get last year's because this year's, you ain't. if you don't have it, you ain't going to get it. Uh, don't worry about it. Tell your children, we're going to go outside and sing Kumbaya at the manger. And uh, think about the good things that the Lord has done for our lives. <laughs> this year, you get nothing. Behind the fence. <laughs> Jim is on fire. I <laughs> have you, Jim. Behind the veil stock session. Yes, sir. Let's talk about some stocks and some bonds. <laughs> but uh, the shipping containers. Yeah. So that means prices, you all. Don't be looking at your hair, people. Don't be looking at your uh, uh, the people who ask you for this price and talking about it costs that much. Listen, everything is going up because of shipping, because of plastic, because of cardboards, because of all of this stuff that we really take for. I'm going to be honest. I took this stuff for granted. I did, too. I'm, I mean, I'm in the business and I took it for granted. I took it for granted. I took it. So are books okay? Uh, is that stuff going up? Is the paper, is there a paper shortage? You know, the combining of the books and all well, that. Well, you know, I, I think right now, um, if you're going to buy, like, everybody has, like, the traditional Christmas books that they like to buy. I think right now, if you're going to buy them, you should buy everything that you want to buy now. Because even though if paper, for, per se, is not going up, because of the rise in shipping costs. Got you. I mean, you're talking about a 300% increase and some places it's up to 600, just depends on where you're shipping from and to. Um, some people are having to go air freight, which is even more expensive. So if you're going to buy anything right now, if I can say that again, buy it now, buy it now, but we also want you to save. Yeah. Mona, you get last words. Javon, I'm a, I call her Mona, but Javon, you're going to get last words real quick because our time is here. Yo, she, I got to have her off by eight o'clock, uh, but uh, I'm going to give her some last parting words of uh, just encouragement to, to the people. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us. But here she is. She's going to have her solo moment. Boom. Uh. You thank you, Williams. Um, thank you, one, um, for the opportunity to be on your show. I feel like this is going to be a major platform for, for you. So just keep doing what you do. Um, again, if I can encourage you to do anything, it would be to save. Um, and if you're going to buy something for Christmas, a special toy book or whatever, go ahead and purchase that now. Uh, the other thing I feel like when this when there's a dry season, I feel like there are comes multiple opportunities out of the dry season. William said earlier, like if you're a trucker, um, there a, there's a shortage of trucker. So get your game up with that. But I do feel like if we take this opportunity, sit back and just really think about what can we do to better our communities, better our own world? Um, you could birth a business out of that. Williams, we probably should come back one day and actually talk about how to birth a business. But we can birth, you can birth a business out of that. Just think it through. I am going to let Williams have my email address. So if anybody has an idea or something and want some, want to talk it through, you can definitely email me. Uh, I'm here for you. And the last thing um, I wanted to say, my tagline is I always go get yours. So listen, this is your life. You only live it once. Do everything that you want to do and go get yours. I love it. Listen, this is just the way we're going. We're going to end that this way. You all, uh, I'm, Thank you so much for your time. This has been an awesome day, uh, awesome information uh, for us. Uh, and, and we have a job to do. So I agree with her. 
when there is a down season, some people are really making a lot of money right now. They are making a lot of moves in this. You don't have to be, you can come out of this and be great and be wealthy. This might be the season. We might be the Josephs where we stored, we stored, and now we can turn this around. Listen, guys, thank you so much for joining me tonight uh, behind the veil right there. Uh, this is always, thank you so much, Javon, for the platform. I appreciate you. Uh, much success in what you're going to do. Um, and uh, I know you already got a second plan. She already in June, y'all, in her head. Don't don't let her trick you. She already is in June in her brain with her product. She stays on top of her game. Go check her out at mojoeducation.com or kaplan.com. And uh, if you need information, she's definitely a good good person to talk about birthing businesses and all that good stuff. You can tell she's a wealth of knowledge and I, I appreciate you from doing that. Listen, y'all, I got to get out of here. I got to get her out of here. We got to go. I got this other tune that's coming up on the thing that I just absolutely love. She got to get out of here, y'all. Y'all tell her goodbye. Thank you, girl. I'll talk to you. Text me your email so I can give it to the people. Have a great time. All right. Bye. Bye bye. Came and delivered me. Hey, y'all. She had to leave. It's me and you. What? I said, he heard. Yeah. God don't hear your cry. And he, he will deliver you. Good God, man. This is new music coming. He will. You be encouraged. Hey, y'all join me next week. It's going to be off the chain. I have a very special guest. And I got new music. You don't want to miss next week. Glory. I got some hip hop music next week. Lord Jesus. I'm still saved though. Come on. He gonna do it if he did it before. He heard, he heard, he heard. He gonna hear your cry. If he did it before, come on. Wait a minute. I go the match over. Will you please come on over? Yes, sir. Every this wretched soul of mine. It was real good. He came and covered me. Yes, sir. He pulled me from the sea. Yes, sir. And now my whole life is fine. Oh, he rescued me. If he did it before, he'll do it again. That was so full of tears. He set my feet for all that stumbling. Boy, I love this music, y'all. It's good. Have so much fun, y'all. Listen. I cried out. Yes, sir. He heard me. Broke my chain. If he did it before, I got the victory. Come on, his hands. I cried out. He heard me. He heard me. Broke my chain. Y'all, I got to get out of here. I'm having too much fun. Thank you for joining me behind the veil. I'm Stephen Williams. They call me the good bishop, and ain't nobody good but God. But he will hear your cry. Join me next week for another moment behind the veil. It's going to be good. Bye, y'all. I like this song. I really like this. I, somebody need this. Yes, sir. Oh, Lord. Yes. Yes.
Y'all, I gotta go. I love it. Woo! Boy, that's good old church right there. Y'all, I'm out of here. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. What? You got to proclaim victory in all this stuff. Might not have no aluminum, but I got victory. Might not be no cardboard, but I got victory. Say it out your mouth. I got victory. 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 Victory.